Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies coming at you with another Legionis Imperialis video. You guys have been soaking these videos up. You are clearly hungry for more, so I am going to deliver as promised. So one of the videos I did last week was part one of the Solo Auxilia Infantry box. Unlike the Space Marine box, there's a little bit more um, painting to do in the Solo Auxilia box, so I couldn't do that in a single video or a single sitting. So I did last week, I did all the Ogrins and the Heavy Sentinels as one video. And now I'm gonna do all the infantry, so obviously the Laszlock sections, the guys with the power axes, the flamers and the command squads, all those miniatures are gonna get done in today's video from one of these box sets. So it's about a hundred miniatures all told um, and I'm gonna paint them up as quick as possible and show you guys how easy it is to get these miniatures on the table. Remembering that these models are only supposed to be, in my opinion, tokens to represent stuff on the gaming table. These are not miniatures that you're supposed to spend a lot of time painting. You're just supposed to get quick coats of paint and make them seem discernible on the tabletop. But that's something I want to do or cover in a further video later in the week. I'm going to talk a little bit more about, I think, the intentions behind these miniatures. Um, but yeah, I've got some thoughts and I want to share them with you guys. So look forward to that video later in the week. Before I get into it, I just want to say two quick points. First of all, to my patrons, you guys are absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for your continued support. I have noticed an increase in people going from paid patrons to free patrons. And just so you guys know, there is no benefit for being a free Patreon member. I don't know why Patreon included this in their, uh, their program. It's actually hurting those patron and teach people quite harshly. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in getting involved with that and supporting the channel, you can go for as minimum as 360, which is the pot of paint to support me monthly and help keep the lights on and the cameras are rolling. There's links to that below. You can check out all the different levels you can. Just so you know, the free option gives you literally nothing. I wish I could turn it off. It's just, it's awful. And secondly, I am trying to get to 40,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So that means oh, through December, I need to get about 2,000 more subscribers. So it'd be awesome if you guys could help me out reach that goal and hit the subscribe button. Okay, without further ado, let's get in and paint some Solar Auxilia Infantry. Okay guys, so this is the Solar Auxilia Infantry sprue. Obviously, I talked in last week's video that the, all the missing sections here are where all of the Dreadnoughts, sorry, the Sentinels and the Ogrens went. So all we are left with is the other kind of two thirds of each sprue, which is just solid infantry. Each sprue contains 20 of the Laszlock squad, squad members, a full squad of the 10 axe wielding guys and 10 flamers and a five man command squad. So we're gonna need that entire section twice. Spray the sprues black and then spray them with lead belcher to give us a really nice base coat. Solo Auxilia are wearing void hardened plate armor. So they are majority metallic. So you can get away with spraying them silver. I find it's the easiest place to start when painting up these specific miniatures. And then all, all we're gonna do is gonna jump in like we did the Ogrens and Sentinels with our Imperial Fist Contrast color. I want my guys to basically be a, a kind of like an offshoot of the Imperial Fists. So these guys have been campaigning with that Legion throughout the uh, Great Crusade, uh, earning many battle honors, fighting together. They're basically in the same expeditionary fleet. Uh, therefore they have earned the respect of the Imperial Fists. Uh, they are allowed to wear their colors. So they get yellow lacquered armor to match them in with the Imperial Fists. This is not something that's unprecedented. There's a couple of Horse Heresy books that suggest this kind of thing happened with even Mechanicum robots and all that kind of stuff can earn the favor of the legions and become honorary members of. So I like that idea. So I'm gonna run with it so I can play my Solo Auxilia and my Imperial Fist legions together. So all I did with the Imperial Fist yellow contrast is paint that over the armored parts of these models that I wanted to be yellow. So for me, it's gonna be the head and the torso armor. So that's gonna run down the front and down the back of these miniatures, very simple. Don't go crazy. If you overspill a little bit here, get a little bit messy. It doesn't make a huge amount of difference. These models are so tiny. And this is also the, the point at which you can swap out the yellow for whatever color you like. If you want your solo cell to be red or green or blue or whatever, this at this point, this bit where I'm using Imperial Fist Yellow, you swap it out for your color of choice. And then the rest of the video stays exactly the same and you will get some solo auxilia painted up and ready for the tabletop. I do have plans to make a video where I discuss, I don't know, like the smaller scale sculpts of the Epic, the new Epic game. So I want to talk about the infantry side of things and what people should expect from them and what I think they represent in the game. And I'm thinking I'm going to make that video later in the week because I think it's super important and I want people to have seen that video before they get their hands on the models you know, on Saturday and uh, yeah, things go awry. I am concerned about how some people will take to these miniatures and what it will mean moving forward. I grabbed the Rattling Grime here and I'm gonna use this to paint all the weaponry. I chose Rattling Grime just to be a little bit different to the Space Marines, which was just the jet black and then I did a little bit of silver. 
the rattling grime over the silver spray will work really nice and make it look kind of like a lacquered uh, rifle. They were like an M16 kind of thing, Vietnam style, uh, where they were all just kind of, they weren't silver, they were just dark metal. So I wanted the same idea for them. Once I got all of those details, let's think about it. I sprayed the model silver, I put some yellow and I put some rattling grime on. Now I'm washing them with black. So null oil straight from the pot, making sure that it's the new null oil, 18 mil pot, not 24, 24 mil pot, much darker. We'll make these models much darker. It's not what we want. 18 mil pot, much thinner. We'll shade all the models down nicely, give you that gritty soldier feel to the models. And that's all I'm pretty much going to do with these solar auxiliary infantry. I used two two paints and a shade after a silver spray, and I'm kind of ready to rock and roll. Now, I did put a little bit more work into the infantry or the command squad themselves. I put a little gold trim around the banner. I added some red filigree around the edges of the banner, red contrast, and I kind of stuff like that. Nothing crazy. You can see one sprue here. This is the shaded sprue, and as you can see, it's pretty hard to see, but I think the models are looking quite nice. Here's the unshaded sprue. They look fine, but definitely the shaded one is, uh, is where it's at. It is really hard to see them because they're so small. So I'm going to follow through and do the same thing with the second sprue, get it all null and oiled up. And then I'm going to move across and show you guys the bases. Now I showed the bases uh, when I did the Imperial Fists, um, I don't know, like two weeks ago or so. And I definitely want to show you guys again. I'm not going to show you in every epic video that I do how I do my bases because I think it'd be a waste of time. But I think a lot of people might be watching the Solo Auxilia video as their first video in my series. And they might be curious to how I do the bases. So very simple. These guys have just been blue tacked to a board, sprayed them black. And from here, I start with Zandri Dust, and I've just got a little bit of case foam. And I'm just basically sponging that on the entire basis. Doesn't matter if a little bit of black is left behind. That's totally fine. We're not going to go for crazy. I'm kind of looking for like, like the limestone-y, kind of marbly, sandstone-y kind of look, you know. And I think, another thing that I think, I think it's really important that you do get nice bases for these miniatures. Because I don't think the infantry models are that nice. And I don't think they're going to stand out as really nice on a tabletop. But if they're on really nice bases, when you look down and see the squad and see a nice base, I think it'll make a huge difference. So I think you should pay attention to your bases more than I think you thought you would going into the system. So the next was Screaming Skull, and it was exactly the same technique, except going a little bit lighter. So we're basically going to do three stages of kind of getting lighter and lighter. Screaming Skull being the middle one. As you can see, I'm stippling that once again over the bases. But some of the previous Xandri dust is indeed showing through uh, on each level. And it's going to give us this kind of m nice mottled look. After that, we are going to finish it off. And we're going to go straight up to Wraithbone, which is brighter again. And we're going to go for exactly the same technique. It's just we're going to do it much lighter again. This is just very kind of a few passes with the, the sponge on the last stage, just to catch those kind of sharp edges. Not even trying to catch the edges if i'm being honest it's, once again it's you can see how light i'm going just pressing it down and i know it's hard to see because like the whole board is messy and it's it's kind of hard to pick out one thing but i am going to rim the, the models or the bases black in a minute and i will show one of the bases closer to the the camera and you will see the final result i'm actually particularly proud of the, i'm more proud of the bases than i am of the infantry which is kind of funny like here's one of the bases uh, a little bit messier on the edges, so we're just going to get some black paint and a fine brush. I'm going to take our time uh, and rim those bases black, as all good bases should be. Nice, neat and tidy, and here it is held with a camera. I think that base looks absolutely fantastic, and I will now spend a little bit of time uh, filling up 18 of these bases with five models apiece. So if we do the math, that's, that's a lot of models. I took the last color or the middle color, so Screaming Skull uh, from that basing scheme and I painted a little bit of kind of ground texture that is stuck on the bottom of every base of all the models. This only takes a couple of seconds. You can decide how much effort you want to go in if you want to go in and highlight that or wash that. I didn't. I just Screaming Skull painted it real quickly. Nothing crazy. Like I said, these models are tiny. And from here, now I'm going to start to cut out all the models. And because they're so well designed, they're all only attached underneath the feet. So you can cut these out and the models are still fully painted. Very easy to clean off those bits with a, a knife or a scalpel. A little bit of flash that might be left over from cutting them out. Now I have three boxes of Sol Auxilia Infantry to do already. So obviously this is the first one. I have two more to those, like 200 more Solar Auxilia to paint. And I will be doing them in this scheme and have quite a large force. 
I also have just shy of 40 uh, epic tanks to paint. So far I've painted five, I think. So quite a few more to do. <laughs> So you can see once all, I've basically cut out the two 20 man last lock uh, sections here. And this is what I was talking about with the scalpel, just removing that last bit of flash from underneath the bases so that when I glue them onto the bases, they sit flush, sit flat. The last thing you want is gaps between the models and the bases because the models are so small, the bases are so thin, gaps will actually stand out a hell of a lot more than on like a 28 millimeter miniature. So you want them sitting as flush as possible. Okay, as you see, I separated the two piles of models and I have the, the banner bear, the sergeant and the, the kind of vox operator, top three on each. So I can basically build the command squads of each of the uh, Laszlo sections first so I don't get them all confused. And all it is is a dab of super glue on the bottom of the feet and glue them into position. And like I said, repeat this process 18 times over. So here's the little Laszlo section command. Like I said, the base is really nice. So it draws your attention. It makes it look like I put a lot more effort in. Here's a little um, power axe wielding squad. You know, I have these guys in 28 millimeter form. You think I'd remember the actual name of them. They do have an actual name. And I apologize for not remembering it. Same with the flamer squad. I know they have a specific name, but I can't remember it. The difference between these and the Space Marines, I think is a little bit different is like, you know, the Space Marines special squad, like the jump pack stand out a little bit, Terminator stand out a little bit with color and the plasma squad has a little bit of plasma. So some of the special uh, weapons, like the axes and stuff are, they kind of blend in with the Lazlock section. When you look down on a tabletop, it's kind of hard to tell them apart. So I think I might go back in at some stage and I don't know if they're power axes so I can add a little bit of a blue glaze to the axes and stuff like that to make it stand out. I don't know. I think I'll do something though. But here is the entire infantry box finished off and ready for the tabletop. I'm super pleased with the result. And I do hope you tune in later in the week for the video where I explain my thoughts on the infantry for Epic. Okay guys, and there we have it. One complete solo auxilia infantry section is now painted and ready for the tabletop. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like I said at the beginning, they're not supposed to be painted to a super high standard. They're just supposed to represent a Laszlock squad on a table or something, you know, not quite as intricate as our detail as playing 28 millimeter miniatures. I think all the love and attention for epic miniatures comes in the form of dreadnoughts and tanks and titans and flyers. All those things you can spend a lot of time on, make them look really cool. I and mean, when you look down on an epic tabletop, those are the bees that are gonna show up and stand out. So keep that in mind when you paint your models. Don't get discouraged if your tiny little infantry models aren't looking like they, they, they should in your head. They are literally tiny, so don't, don't panic. All right, thank you guys so much for sticking around at the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give it a like. Ask me any questions you want in the comments below and I will get back to each and every one of you guys. And if you want to help me get to 40,000 subscribers by the end of the year, please hit that subscribe button. It means a lot to me. Thanks for sticking around at the end. I'll see you in the next video.